Okay, welcome back. We're looking at number four from 2019 on the AP Stat Free Response Question. Um, this is obviously a significance test, and they give you an alpha level, so that gives you a pretty good clue. So my students run through the acronym Phantoms, and that tells them all the steps they need to do in a significance test. So we need to talk about the parameter of interest. What are we actually concerned with here in this problem? We need to write our hypotheses. We need to list what the assumptions are and the conditions that satisfy them. We have to name the type of test we will do. Uh, then give a test statistic. We need to obtain a p-value. Then we make a decision and give a statement in context. So as long as you go through all of those, that whole process, you should get full credit on this question here. So let's start with what we're interested in. I'm going to, uh, actually I got a couple things here already. First I'm going to use some notation. They give you the percent, but we have to figure out in our calculator, it likes it like X out of N. We need the number of successes out of the total. So if you figure out 19.7% of 61, 0.197 times 61, you're going to get, and you might have to round it. So here's the, here's the calculator, you get 12.017, but really, uh, that percent has been rounded. So it was 12. You, you should be very close to a whole number there. So figuring that out, we have the X value for 2014 would be 12, and the N value for 2014 is 61. They tell you that. Um, also for 2017, likewise, you get 20 and 52. The P hat values they give you, right? That's what the proportion is for each one. So going through phantoms and starting out, uh, the parameter of interest. We're interested in the true difference in the proportions for 2014 versus 2017. Now our hypothesis, ooh, we should write those out, hypotheses. So our hypothesis statement for the null, remember the null is always that there's no difference between the two. So in this situation, that means that P of 2014 is the same as P of 2017. And then the alternative, and that depends on the way they word the question, are we trying to see if one is better or are we just trying to see if they're different? If, it's, if they're just saying, are they different, then we have to do two-sided, it'd be not equal to. But the question here is, has there been an increase? So we wanna see if 2014 is less than 2017 for each proportion. So those are our hypothesis statements. On to the assumptions. So here are the assumptions. The two samples are randomly selected. First, we have to assume that they're independent of each other. So the way that you check that is first, are they randomly selected? And they are. And then the total population has to be greater than 10 times the sample size. That way, when you select the, the probabilities don't change. So how do we word this out? The two samples are randomly selected and the total population of plants is certainly greater than 10 times n for each. So the samples are independent of each other. Okay, that is one condition that we must satisfy. The other condition is that the samples must be large enough. And so to check that, we use NP and NQ. They both have to be greater than 10 for each of the samples. So actually plug the numbers in. 12 is greater than 10. Um, whoa, I didn't do it for that one. Oh yeah, 49 is greater than 10 and 20 and 32 are all also both greater than 10. By the way, some sources out there say they have to be greater than five. It, it doesn't matter. As long as you pick one, then you're good to go. People just disagree. All right, so the samples for each year are large enough. We will proceed with a two proportion Z test. That is the name. So we've done P, H, A, and N already. So in our calculator, we'll pull that up. So pulling up the calculator, we hit the stat button, we go to the left, and we're looking for two proportion Z test. That is choice six. So we hit the six button. So our first um, sample, we have 12 out of 61. In our second sample, we have 20 out of 52. And we are checking to see if 2014 is less than. So we have that correctly indicated right here. I think we're good to go. We're gonna calculate that out. We get a p-value of 0.013, whoa. So it's not required that you draw the picture, but it's always a good idea. And you can do that right from the results of your test here. We have a z-score. You have to write, write down the test statistic. Let's draw a little normal curve. 
All right, so if we're looking at a, a standardized normal distribution here, the standard normal curve, the z-score is going to be out here at, let's write it down, z equals negative 2.2095. The p-value is the probability, so this is the probability that z is less than or equal to our critical value here, 2.2095. So that equals 0 0.01. 356. Now, alpha, let's write that down. So, alpha was what? 0 0.05. That's generally what we're going to use. Did they tell us what alpha was? Yes, they did. All right. So, 0 0.05 is alpha. So, going back to phantoms, we have satisfied everything up through T. T was the test statistic, and that's that Z score right there, but also the P value. That's the O. So, now we need to make a decision. So, let's be really clear on our decision here. So, because our p-value is less than 0 0.05, we are going to reject the null hypothesis. So, you have to use those words there. So, lastly, we make a statement in context. So, I always go back up. Do the data provide statistical evidence that there has been an increase in the proportion of plants that are resistant to glyphosate? We have sufficient evidence that there has been an increase in the proportion of cochlea plants that are resistant to glyphosate. And I kind of kind of brushed over this, but the reason why we rejected the null, so we reject the fact that they're equal. It's because your p-value is low. When your p-value is low, it's saying, I don't think that this is likely. This is very unlikely. It's unlikely that the null is true. All this math is based on the null. So because it's unlikely the null is true, I'm going to go with uh, the alternative hypothesis. Whoa, just left me there. We're all getting tired here. So that is question number four from 2019. Good luck to you out there in the AP stats test.